Scoopy, Scoopy Radio, Radio Overtime here with uh, somebody I kind of know, Kenny Jess Smith. I said, I just, the only person who has ever been in media that gave me a birthday present. The rest of these guys, they want to do interviews, they want to take your time and give nothing back. I know he got that from his mom because she's the one who probably instilled that to give you stuff. I already know the stories. Oh, we played no games. No games. So look, last year we were talking about wardrobe. Can you tell who I got inspiration from with this? Um, Ernie Johnson. No. It's not Craig Sager, but it's a little no. Ernie Johnson. It's a little Ernie Johnson and stuff. One of your co-workers. This Ernie, man. Well, this is Ernie. This is Ernie. This is the bow tie game with the, with the, with the solid jacket. Okay, so you, you're on to something. The jacket. I'm not sure. It's not. I give you a... I give you... you got Uber. 1984. No, but, no, but you, you're wearing it way better. No, the draft day suit. This is not the draft day look. This is not it, man. You are wearing it way better than he did. This is flavor, style, charisma. His was Hillbilly Hicks. He said he was poor. He, that was a poor Hillbilly <laughs> outfit he had on. This is New York City flavor. He got, look, the, the bow tie's got like some extra stuff on it. Come on, man. Well, let me tell you, you know where I got this bow tie inspiration from? What's that? Um, Fabulous is Summertime Shootout album. Okay. But you, like I'm saying, Chuck wasn't thinking about fabulous shootout album when he was getting dressed for the draft in '84. He was trying to get to the money. Oh, you're good, man. you're good. So I like your outfit. First and foremost, I gotta ask you: being on TV, you gotta kind of go shopping, get a tailor. How does that work? Well, for me, I was my, my sister had been in um, fashion for a long time. She was a buyer for Nordstroms, a buyer for a lot of stores, Macy's, all kinds of men's department, all kinds of things. Um, so she always would tell me how. No, you can't wear that color with this. You got to wear darks on the outside. She would tell me these things. I didn't, I didn't, they were going out one out the other. And then as I got older, I would shop like that. She'd be like, oh, you were listening. So I, I got to credit my sister and my dad for that, for my style sense of just awareness. Of yeah. I'm big on TV themes. Uh, 91, I fell in love with the NBA. Uh, my stepfather's from Chicago. NBA on NBC. Michael, the guy you know, the Bulls winning. You playing in the NBA while the NBA on NBC thing was going on. Did that ever get you pumped up when you would watch old tape or when you would see other people play? Well, I think the one thing when, when I was playing, the, you know, because there, there wasn't direct TVs and all cables where you could just kind of see all the games. Where so now, even a national game, a local game could be seen nationally if you really want to watch it. Um, but for us, you know, it was the only game on that day. So it was always special that you would be on and everybody and, and your colleagues and everybody else were going to be watching you. That was always impressive. The 90s, the Rockets, 94, 95. Um, the Bulls, Michael Jordan wasn't playing. People talk about this a lot. People say, oh, Robert Ory, he has multiple rings. He should be in the Hall of Fame. Or, you know, Michael retired. He, you know, the Bulls would have won if, the, if, if uh, Michael had retired. I want to ask you, if Michael hadn't retired, would you, the Rockets have played the Bulls in the finals that year? Oh, we would have beat him. And, um, and actually, everyone forgets he did play the second year. He was wearing number 45. And, and the team that they lost to, Orlando Magic, we swept. We swept them. We were that much better than them. They lost to them. So even a good, healthy Michael takes them to seven and maybe win. We would have we beat the Bulls without question. They didn't match up well against us. And during those years that they were actually in championships, which wasn't the playoffs, we were eight and two against them during those years. We, we didn't have, we matched up well with them. We wouldn't have been scared, I'll tell you that much. Why does that get lost in the sauce? Because Michael was the greatest player that ever lived. And so the, the legacy is always going to be big, bigger than it should be. And he never lost in the finals. So we would have been the first. <laughs> what team back in that era when you played for the Rockets were the biggest competition? You, you think, you know, you guys beat the Knicks, you guys beat the Orlando Magic. What team? Seattle, Seattle Supersonics. With Gary Payton and Sean King. Those guys matched up really well against us. Um, they, they, they could score the ball all, all. They could defend. They had a great coach in George Call at the time. Um, you know, they, had a, they had a lot going for them. So that was probably one of the best teams that maybe didn't win it. What is it about you guys, you Rockets? You got Sam Cassell. He's, he's an assistant coach with the Clippers. You got Rudy T. He's able to keep a gig with the with Scott Brooks. Scott Brooks. He's, he's coaching in Washington. What, me talking the game. I'm the voice of the game. So What was special about that locker room back then? 
I think the one thing that was special was that mental fortitude. We had guys that never doubted the abilities and never doubted that we could win. Never. Like, never could imagine losing. Like, that was that was one of the biggest things, the losing of grandeurs that we had. And then lastly, uh, Shaq had said some things about uh, Penny and him and had they left or had they stayed together, you know, something would have been special or he understands the KD and, and uh, at Russell Westbrook conundrum. What was special about those two guys back then when you guys played the, the Magic in the finals? You know, anytime there's a guard and a big man, you have the perfect balance. So they had the perfect balance, and Penny was so versatile that he could he could play inside, outside. And you had Shaq with you know, all everything that he's done, and being so young, uh, that was a dynasty missed. Dynasty missed by the Lions of Magic for sure. Dynasty missed. Kitty Jess Smith, Scoopy Radio Overtime. Appreciate you, bro. Scoopy Radio.